everyone. In this video, we will solve one of the questions of interview preparation marathon. So the topic for last week was arrays. So we'll be solving one of the five questions in this particular video. We have solved all the five questions in different videos. You can see them. Also, the last week was logic building. I hope you participated in both the contests. If you haven't, don't worry. Try solving the problem and make sure to solve the questions coming ahead in the rest of the marathon contest. So it's a contest in which every week we'll be picking up one of the topic that is there for interview preparation and there will be questions around that okay so let's first see the questions that were there in arrays so as you can see these are five questions so now we will solve unique color shirt okay let's go ahead so since the contest is ended the problem has been moved to practice section let's go there so let's first try to understand the question once we understand the question we'll try and come up with the logic and then we'll write the code okay so let's first read the problem statement so the problem says prep buddy is very tasteful of clothes he has n number of shirts hanging in the hanger in his wardrobe. Prepadi likes to wear different colored clothes. So whenever he sees there are two or more shirts with the same color, he removes all the shirt of that color from his wardrobe. Now he wants to know how many m unique color shirts are left in the wardrobe. Prepadi wants you to find find m. Okay, let's read it once again. So this line is not very important. This line let's start from here. He has n number of shirts hanging in his wardrobe, okay? Prabhadi likes to wear different colored clothes. So whenever he sees there are two or more shirts with the same color, he removes all the shirt of that color from his wardrobe. Now he wants to know how many m unique color shirts are left in his wardrobe. Prabhadi wants you to find m, okay? So the problem statement here seems to be simple. So I think if there is any shirt which is occurring more than once in the wardrobe, we have to remove it and then we have to find out what are the shirts that are remaining, how many shirts are remaining, okay? So let's see what's the note. As there are many shades of a color, so consider integers as a color name, okay? That is color of a shirt is 0, 1, 2, N, okay? So basically this is a color shade, this is a different color shade. So basically integers are color shade. Let's see the input and output. The first line of the input contains an integer n denoting the number of shirts in the wardrobe. The second line of the input contains n integers c1, c2, cn color of shirts separated by space. Okay. Output format print a single integer m denoting the unique color shirts left in the wardrobe. Okay. So basically in the input we will be given n. So as you can see, this is the input, this is the n, and these are the colors of the shirts. And output, we have to print m. So let's see input and output. So the input, this is n. These are the shirts of different color. And the m is 2, which means after the required shirts are removed from this particular combination, there are only two unique shirts that's remaining, okay? Let's just see that uh, how is this happening. Let's try and solve the test cases. So if you see that here we have... Uh, what are the different colors? Let's just put down the different colors. We have one color, we have two, we have three and we have four. So let's see how many times one is occurring. One is occurring just once, two is occurring twice, uh, three is occurring twice and four is occurring once. Okay, let's just verify. So yeah, so I think this is correct. So now we have to remove all the shirts that is occurring more than once. So we'll be removing this and this and these are going to be my unique shirts. Hence, only two of them are remaining, one and four. So the output is and that is what there in the explanation now this is I think I have, we have understood the input and output let's just see the constraints first so n is going to have value from 1 to 10 to the power 3 and ci is going to have value which means the color will have value from 1 to 10 to the power 3 so we will obviously use this while we are writing the code first just think of the logic so I think this question we have already come up with the logic if you see so if as you can see while solving this test case what did I do what I did was I noted down all the colors basically I what I did was that I just counted how many ones are there in this particular array I counted how many twos are there in the array I counted how many threes are there in the array I counted how many fours are there in the array and after I counted what I did was that I just saw that which all colors are occurring more than once and I just cancelled them out basically I just look for colors which are just occurring once and I counted them. So I think this is what we will do here. This is the logic. So let's first write down the steps and then we'll write the code here. So what I'll do, we'll do is first we will count occurrence of each color. It's as simple as that. We'll count occurrence of each color. And then what we will do is we will simply count elements that are occurring just once. Okay. That is the 
logic and it's a simple logic so now what we need here is that in order to count occurrence of each color so since this is an array i think we will need an array to keep the count of each color so now let's see how we are going to implement it so for implementation i see for this particular step we will keep an array which will keep the count of all the elements that's there in the array and then we will simply traverse through the array and find the elements that are occurring just once okay so let's just try and write this code okay so first we will write the code in c and then what we will do is we'll see how the code has to be written in c c plus plus and java first we will write the code in c and then we will see how it has to be written in c plus plus and java so we have already taken n as the input now what we will do is we'll run a loop from 0 to n minus 1 and take all the arrays as input now let's just go ahead and try to write the code so first make sure before watching this particular code part you have tried to write the code on your own okay now we will be writing first code in c and then we will just see the code of c plus plus and java as well okay so first thing that we will do is we have already taken n as the variable the col will be taking care of the color basically the color that we are taking as input here and this count is basically taking care of the unique shirts okay and then we have just taken n as the input now what we will do is we'll just start a loop from so now what we have seen here is that we need one array to keep count of the elements of the array right we need one extra array so what we will do is we need one kind of counting array so we, what we will do is we will have a count array let's say we call it count array and what is going to be the size of this so we know that the maximum value of c of i could be 10 to the power 3 so we need maximum of the count as 10 to the power 3 okay we'll just keep let's say two extra elements we'll keep it 1002 okay now what we will do is we will initialize this with 0 okay now what we will do is we will as we keep on inputting the number we will keep on increasing the count so let's say what we do is so now here we are taking this particular integers as input and here in the count array what we are doing is we are incrementing okay so by the end of this particular loop let's put a space here by the end of this particular loop what will happen is that we will have the array which is having the count of all the elements that are occurring as many times okay so now i'll just go ahead let's say i run the loop through the count so here it will give me the unique color we just see that whatsoever is having value one which means the shirt is unique and after this we will simply print the value of unique colored shirts okay now let's just try and run this code and see if we are getting the right answer okay so we got right answer for this let's just submit the code okay so our code got accepted so if we have to write the same code in c plus plus let's see how we are going to do it so as you can see this is the code in c plus plus the header files change it is as per C++ and then we have the variables over here we take n as input then we have the count array we are initializing the count array to 0 let's say using memset and then we have we are just taking the input of the color and we are changing the count array and here again we are traversing from we are keeping a very basic traversal we are just going from 0 to 1003 why 1003 because this could be maximum element we can reduce this time as well and then at the end we are printing the count okay this is how we are going to do so this is how the code runs in c plus plus let's just submit the code and see if it gets accepted we have already run it once so as you can see the answer gets accepted now let's just write the code in java so now this is the code in java so here we have the variables declared here we have the count array in which we are going to keep the count we took the n as the in input and then we ran a loop in which we are taking color as the input basically all the elements of the array and then we're increasing the count of each color okay and from here i just run a loop from i equal to 0 to 1002 basic because maximum size is going to be that and whosoever is having count equal to one i'm just incrementing the count and this is how i'm printing the count so this is a very basic question with a very basic approach as you can see that if you simply know how to traverse through the array even in the simplest method that you know then you can just go across and solve this particular problem and if you have little bit of logical thinking skills you can definitely crack this particular problem okay so make sure you try this problem on your own as well